Hi, welcome back. Today we're continuing to discuss radios. Now, if you didn't watch the first video, I highly recommend going back and seeing that. That video goes over kind of the different, different classes of radios, licensing, range, along with some airsoft specific considerations. This video, we're going to be talking about the absolute most popular radio used for airsoft, used by preppers, um, kind of the tactical community, which as you can see, the fact that I have three of them behind me, is the Beofan UV5R. Now, these are really popular for a couple of reasons. First off, they're cheap. The basic radio will only costs you about 25 bucks. For comparison, the radios we were using when I was on a security team were over $600 each. So these are relatively cheap radios and at their price point, there's nothing that comes even close to doing what these can do. Second, they're five watt radios, so they're relatively powerful kind of as much as you can reasonably get for power from a handheld radio just due to battery limitations. They have a wide selection of accessories that you can get for them, including replaceable antennas and batteries, as you can see by the fact that the three sitting behind me have different batteries and different antennas on them. And they also can listen in, and if you jailbreak them, even transmit on FRS slash GMRS, MERS, ham, some ham frequencies, not everything, but quite a bit. Um, they can also listen and even transmit, though you shouldn't, on weather channels, and you can listen to your local FM country radio station with one of these radios. They're not the perfect radio. They don't have the cleanest signal if you go to transmit. Um, they don't have the greatest sound quality but they work and they can do a lot. So for most people, this radio will do everything you need. Now, it's worth mentioning these are not FCC compliant GMRS radios. They are not FCC compliant FRS radios or MERS radios. You technically can't transmit on those bands at all with these radios. You can only use them on hand bands. That said, you can unlock them and I'll post a if you look in the description, we'll have a link to another guy's video that shows how to unlock them. And once you've unlocked it, it'll work fine on those frequencies. Yes, technically it's violating FCC regulations, but with that said, the FCC publicly posts all of the fines that they send, all everyone who gets arrested, anything like that that the FCC does, they will they are required by law to post it in a public database. And in the last 10 years, probably forever, but only the last 10 years is available, no one has been fined for using one of these radios without licensing or anything else. Um, just to use the radio to talk to people. Um, yes, one guy got arrested for using one of these radios to threaten to kill members of his local ham radio club. A couple guys have been fined for using these radios to deliberately jam ham radio repeaters. They got fined pretty significantly too. Um, but in terms of just using the radios to talk to your buddies, the FCC doesn't care. You know, technically, is it illegal? Yes. Is anyone going to come after you? No. What the radios, when you buy it, will generally look like this. You get a dinky antenna and a little bitty battery. Now, this battery, I found is enough to get through an eight hour day at work listening to the radio. Like. If I'm listening to my local country radio station at work, which is the main thing I actually use these radios for, it'll get me through a day at work. The radios also come with an earpiece. Honestly, my ears hate this earpiece. It's a little flexible. You can push up and down if you've got big ears or small ears. I find this very uncomfortable, but it's an option. It's got a little push to talk. The radios also in the box come with a belt clip. Honestly, I don't like, once again, I don't like that much. Um, I tend to wear thick leather gun belts that are designed to carry more weight. Um, and that belt clip just doesn't fit very well on those. But it's, it's something that comes in the box. Now, if you buy one of these radios, let me show you how I set mine. First off, 
you can get one of these USB programming cables. They sell for about 10 bucks and it lets you plug the radio into a computer and load a bunch of information and channels through that. The biggest advantage to doing that is you can directly program your channels onto the radio using the keypad and the menus. Um, but if you do it from a computer, it will, instead of telling you the frequencies, it will tell you what channel you're actually on. So you can give it like a, a descriptor. For example, that fire DI, this is listening to my local fire department, dispatch channel, and the second one where it's St. Joe's, I'm not sure if the camera will pick that up, is telling me that that is listening to the St. Joseph ambulance dispatch channel. So I can kind of know what's going on in the neighborhood. If I switch this to Zero, one, six. One, six, I can see I've got that bottom channel is FRS 16. So I can easily remember what I programmed onto the radio. And to do that, you need to hook them up to a computer. The next thing I'd recommend is get a pouch to actually carry the radio so it doesn't fall off if you're using it in an airsoft or tactical context. Now, there are several manufacturers that make pouches dedicated for these. What I personally prefer is a surplus flashbang pouch. This is designed to hold a flashbang grenade, but I can just take my flashbang pouch, drop my radio in, and DA, it fits Actually, it fits pretty well. And on the back, this only takes one column of molly. A lot of the aftermarket pouches I've seen, they're generally two columns of molly. So I like these surplus pouches, and you can get them in Multicam, you can get them in Scorpion V2, you can get them in UCP, you can get them in Kyle Brown. I've seen them as cheap as $3. Usually they go for about 10 to 15 depending on the color. So hit up eBay, you can find a good pouch. One other thing I'd recommend here that the radios I use have is they make an extended battery. So you can see side by side, here's the battery that the radios usually come with and the extended battery. Now, the main reason I like the extended battery isn't the longer runtime, which I'm sure is nice. I've never run one of these down completely. It simply just fits in my hand better. And I've got small hands. I can't imagine, to like, if you're a big guy, this is going to be tiny in your hands. Also, the larger, and I think this is 3,800 milliamp hour batteries, have a charging port on the side. So you can charge directly into the battery without needing the docking station. Another thing I like on these radios that I set them up with is replacing the built-in antenna with a Nagoya NA701 antenna. This doesn't actually increase the range, it just makes the transmissions much clearer, at least in my testing. I like the short antennas. They make a longer 771 antenna, which is a longer length, and I couldn't tell the difference in any of my tests between the two. Um, so I just go with the shorter antenna so it's not banging you in the face when you have this connected up to a pouch. Now, I've seen some people will clip the radio directly into their Molly using belt clip and just let anybody around hear what comes out of the speaker. Mostly, I've seen that done by guys at Airsoft Games who are in a squad leader or some sort, some sort of leadership position. And... They're surrounded by friendly players, generally giving instructions or orders, and they don't care if everybody else can hear what's coming out of the radio because it kind of informs the players around them. If you're doing sneaky stuff, though, you kind of don't want your radio to randomly blurt out your position and tell everyone where you are because someone transmitted. These nicely have a couple of plugs, for your microphone push to talk and and speaker or headset kind of annoyingly you've got you'll notice you've got two different size plugs there there's a 3.5 millimeter plug which is 
kind of an industry standard in audio. My, my phone has a 3.5 millimeter plug. My laptop has a 3.5 millimeter plug. My wife's laptop has 3.5 millimeter plugs. Most things use those. Unfortunately, with these Beofang radios, the audio output that you would need to connect your speakers to is on the 2.5 millimeter, not the 3.5 millimeter plug. Somebody out there probably makes a cable that's 2.5 millimeter on one end and 3.5 millimeter on the other that's an appropriate length and is kind of coily so it would work well. I've yet to find one. If you happen to know of one, leave a comment and be curious to try it. What I'll usually do Oh, what a mess. What I do is I'll get this, I've got this Baofeng shoulder microphone. It's got a clip on the back so I can clip it up to a molly or a shoulder strap, something like that. Um, you generally want to put this on your off side. So like my right side, I'm right handed, my right shoulder is clear for a rifle stock with nothing interfering there. And on my left shoulder, I can put my microphone. It's got a push to talk here, so you can potentially transmit without having to dig down into your pouch to get your radio. It's got kind of a coily cable, so it's not going to rip out if you move around. This is a genuine Beofang, and I just wrote, took a Sharpie to cover up the bright white text that said Beofang, so it's a little better camouflage. It's black, it's not perfect. But... Anyways, the best thing about them is they have this 3.5 millimeter audio output. So you can plug the cable in to that 3.5 millimeter output and then plug your 3.5 millimeter output into the 3.5 millimeter import on a pair of Howard Lay Impact Sport headphones. So now you have hearing protection with noise amplification that also is connected up to your radio. So this is how I will run this. I'll put, try to put links in the description to all of those different pieces. And I find for playing airsoft, this worked great. Pretty much, oh, and for listening to FM radio, you can turn one of these radios on. Channel mode. Tap the top button on the side. And it's now playing my local country radio station. Which is actually the primary thing these things get used for. This sits on my desk every day playing the radio, or playing music when I'm at work. They aren't waterproof. They'll resist light rain. Um, they're not shockproof or anything like that. But they work. It's a $20 radio for $20. It's a good option. And Frankly, for Airsoft, 90% of the guys you will see on the field who have a radio have one of these. That's it for now. Have a good day.